Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm delighted to have an exclusive interview with Harry Tanfield of AG2R Mondial. Is it a Citroen now or has it changed yet? Not until January. Oh, okay. Uh, hi Harry, great to have you here as well and just to um, have kind of a catch up since the lockdown interview. Where are you first of all since you're in Spain? Yeah, somewhere in northern Spain, um, kind of bouncing between Bilbao and Pamplona. A lot of the race is all just in this one one region of uh, like within two hours of those places. So like two hours north of Madrid and two hours away from all there, just all in this one region where it's pretty hilly and it's quite nice though. It's very much like um, it's like England in spring, I'd probably say. Maybe a bit, maybe a bit drier. <laughs> What's it been like um, this first uh, Grand Tour for you, and under these really strange conditions of COVID as well? Yeah, um, it's it's been quite good. The race actually, I've enjoyed it. Um, I've not, you know, touch wood. I've not been that close to any time limits yet on any mountain days. Uh, even though I thought I was done for on day two when I got dropped on a climb 20k in <laughs> but um but no it all came okay and um I've been getting better actually legs have been feeling better each day um up until the rest day so and the fact they were all right today so hopefully um you know it's just business as usual tomorrow two category one climbs 8k at eight percent something like that I mean the climbs that we've done have actually been okay um some of the final climbs have been a bit steep you know like eight or nine percent but the ones that have been mid-stage have only typically been about five or six percent. So the bunch has kind of stayed together and it's been not too bad. But um, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a bit spicy with the two. I think we just do like a two laps of this uh, Category 1 climb. <laughs> What's kind of been your role for the team? We saw you in the breakaway on stage four. Yeah, um, I've just, um, I'm pretty much just helping the, the climbers because there's not really a lot for me to do um, in you know, in a lot of the days where it's summit finishes or, you know, big mountain days where it's a real small kind of select group, um, just about bunch positioning and helping the guys if the weather's bad or with feeding and stuff. But we, we've got it pretty dialed in with all the swan years, um, feeding, you know, from the side of the road and um, more just mainly about positioning. So when I'm in the bunch and, um, you know, we're going into a climb, we'll make sure that we're at the front. Uh, or nearer the front, should I say. And then I generally slide back a little bit on the climb. And then when I'm at the top, I can either go to the car or I sometimes call the car anyway, just to just to chat, just to to ask, um, you know, if, if we need to do anything or it's easier than the race radio sometimes if the weather's bad and you can't hear very well through it. But we've had a pretty bad team car position for most of the race. So um, <laughs> that's not been ideal. But then obviously after the climbs, to come back forward and then take the riders with me back to the front because they love sitting on the back as well so uh, not because they not because they're, they're going to slope the climb just because they're sat at the back just for the hell of it i think but um yeah it's better to be near the front so what's it been like having your first grand tour what's the, like have you felt any differences in racing you've done so many different races already in your short career but what does this kind of does it compare to any uh, kind of racing you've done before um I don't know really. It's it is different, but then it's it is very similar. It's, you know, similar to Poland, the World Tour race that I did in September or August. I did that. I think it was August. It's very similar in terms of like the course is obviously hard. I think that it's maybe raced a little bit less. It can be raced a little bit less like aggressively sometimes, but um, that's just because everyone knows that they've got to go back to back every day for such a long time, rather than you know a five or six day stage race is a little bit different. Um, but then obviously with the Giro being on and then with teams, you know, making a classics team as such to do the funders and stuff like that, it's really just kind of, I guess it's just left more of the climbers, the pure climbers to be left for this kind of race or young or kind of filling riders that are, you know, some guys, some teams that are here have really got like an under 23 team almost. And some teams have like in terms of like a development team and it just teams are just struggling basically to to field the eight riders, I think, that um, that they need because of all the other races that have been on, obviously, prior to this as well. Um, so, that, again, that, that that makes the field a bit more of a different dynamic when you, you've got less kind of classics, bigger riders. I mean, God knows what the average weight of the riders in the pearls on. It's got to be like 64, 65 kilos, something like that. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, Paru Bay was cancelled this year. Wasn't that supposed yeah. to be your? It was, yeah, it was. It literally was on my plan um, to do Roubaix, and I spoke to my coach um, in the week before this, pretty much, and they were saying, you know, we're struggling with with riders and programs and stuff. And do you fancy the Vuelta? Because you know we've got the guys that are doing Flanders and stuff. Uh, that and they're you know you can do Roubaix if you want to do Roubaix, but um, you know what what's your preference? And I said, well. I'll I'll do you know I'll do the Vuelta because obviously it's it's the first opportunity to do a Grand Tour and um, although I hadn't prepared for it at that point um, really as such I'd just been riding before so I um, so that was the week before the race so I got on a flight to Spain the next day and went to Spain to, to for some training for you know ten days or something like that basically um, before coming here for the start. And then two days later, after after I spoke to my coach, the um, the race got cancelled anyway. So otherwise, I wouldn't have literally. I wouldn't have. That would have been me done from September. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have raced. A good I'm choice glad, then. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I came here at least. Um, I'm still alive. I'm still getting around. And there's a few other people that are in. Like there's always. You know, I've never been okay. I am sometimes the last guy on the road during the race, but at the end of the race, I'm. I haven't been the last guy on the road. Touch wood, but um. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, looking forward to week two because we're hoping to get you on another rest day. Um, what yeah, kind of I've got to, things... I've got to, yeah, no, well, I've got to get to the next week, haven't I? Because obviously, there's a TT the day after the rest day, and then I need to catch up with you on the next rest day. So, <laughs> yes, I got to survive another week at least. But have you have you ever ridden up the Angler Row? Just some steep climb or something. It's like horrendous. <laughs> yeah. I, got yeah. my, I got my brother to post me in the 11:34 cassette anyway. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, I, I spoke to him like three days ago. He's shipping it to this hotel, so hopefully it's here tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't if it doesn't come by if it doesn't come by Wednesday, though, I'm, I'm pretty screwed because we leave the hotel, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just die going up that whatever that climb is. <laughs> But like literally, when you're in Gruppetto and you've just been spanking yourself all day, and you're going up some horrendous twenty percent berg at the end of a finish, just to get to the line, the last thing you want to be doing is like grinding up there in 39 28 or whatever so you know spin to win what's it like in the gruppetto is it like very fast on the descents because you're all of you are thinking of the time gap uh, the time cutoff time it depends on the stage um not particularly i say people in the world who don't descend very quick anyway they're pretty soft some guys do some guys don't depends if it rains everyone just shits the pants straight away so um i mean yesterday <laughs> I think you know I was dropped on the I went back to the car on the second to last climb and I went back and I couldn't feel my arms I managed to get a gather um put that on I only had arm warmers on and it was like f- five degrees and raining and um I got a gather on and some crappy gloves that weren't neoprene ones they were in the wrong car so I was really struggling and I never got back to the peloton so I started the climb you know five minutes behind the the, co- the convoy pretty much and uh by the bottom of the climb I was like at the back of the convoy pretty much got into the final climb and i put like a minute or two minutes into the other guys that were with me at the top and then some of them called me halfway up to the, the last climb but some of them didn't it was yeah i i just i don't take risks but i just i don't you know i'm not going to waste i'd rather i'd rather make up an extra two minutes or a minute on a descent so then it means i can ride the next climb 10 or 15 what's easier <laughs> so that i can save a minute there you know what i mean uh, that's my mentality but it's been it's it's normally pretty chill um generally it's like 350 watt cap but when you're 80 kilo it's more like 360 odd bit more people do shout though like if it's too hard it's too hard you know and likewise you know on the stage when you know that when you know that you've not got that far to go you know that you're only 15 minutes down and the time cut's going to be 40 minutes and you're going to roll over the line maybe 15 or, or you may have got to roll over the line 20 or 25 minutes down there's no stress like you can go to 30 35 minutes so you know just knock a mile off and save the legs because if you yeah. get to the bus five minutes you know you can get to the bus five minutes early if you want but if you've got to ride every climb at 340 instead of 320 then it's just you're just doing more damage like for no reason um and i'm just constantly just thinking of obviously that that conservation just to try and get me through what's going to be you know a hard middle week and even you know obviously into the last week together